And Eric, I'm noticing that the hold has cleared, that countdown timer resuming its march to T0. What an exciting day for us today. Now, I'm told this is the ninth mission for this booster. Can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the most important things that's been happening in this new era of modern rocketry is that we've learned how to launch, land, and repeat. We've been able to take these boosters and to fly them over and over again. Now, traditional rockets, you would take, you'd fly them once, and you'd throw them away. And that was both wasteful and not sustainable. It also turns out that it costs a whole lot more money when you're flying a rocket only once. Imagine flying an airplane and then having to throw it away. We just wouldn't travel very often. And New Shepard is, is so special, right? 99% of its dry mass is reused, again, over and over again. So this includes the rocket engines, uh, the parachutes. It's really a paradigm shift from the expendable rockets to the reusable rockets, as you were mentioning. Yeah, absolutely. And we get to reuse both the capsule and the booster. So that whole stack becoming a, quite, a, quite an asset for, for us as we're plowing our way forward into the future. Well, thank you for telling us about that. It's very exciting and um, just happy to hear that this is the ninth mission. Okay, we're going to watch and listen as New Shepard goes through its final checks, gearing up for its 24th flight. All right, we have a great view of New Shepard sitting out on the pad, getting ready for launch. Next up in our countdown, we're going to be watching for the bit checks. These are built-in tests to help us make sure that all of our systems are ready to go for flight. We've got great visuals here of New Shepard on the pad. We'll get great audio as well through those built-in tests. And as we see them, we'll call them out. Yeah, Eddie, the first thing we're going to be looking for is the aft fin checks. So if you look down there at the base of the booster, you can see those fins, those control surfaces that rotate to help direct the vehicle on asset and descent. A little bit like uh, sticking your hand out the window while your car is driving. Uh, the, the air pushes against the aerodynamic surface, helping to control the vehicle. There we go, we see the gantry pulling back. Now the, the booster is getting ready. Uh, we are used to seeing the, the gantry out there so we can do load in of our astronauts, our payloads. Again, no humans on board today, but uh, the, everything ready to go. We're watching for those aft fin checks. Uh, you'll watch them rotate at the base of the vehicle. And there they go, moving through the full envelope of uh, motion there. Great built-in test. After those aft fins, we're going to be looking for the engine nozzle gimbling. The engine gimbles or rotates to help maneuver the rocket as it flies, providing a thrust vector control. Meanwhile, we're keeping an eye on the pressure and temperature in the propellant tanks. Both of those sets of variables need to stay in the start box or the green zone uh, for us to be ready to launch. Okay, we are at T minus 30 seconds. It is time to hand it off to Mission Control. Let's launch this rocket. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, 
four. Command to just start. Two, one, zero. Ignition. We there have we ignition see. of our BE three engine. And lift off. Mission Control confirms that New Shepard has cleared the tower and is headed to space. You can see on the lower left side of your screen that we're gaining speed. As New Shepard gains altitude, the atmosphere gets thinner. The graph on the left shows vehicle ascent. Now, we actually started at about 3,700 feet MSL. That's how far above mean sea level we are at launch site one. How exciting, Erica. A great shot there of the PM, the propulsion module, moving away from Earth. That BE-3 engine providing 100% power level. And here shortly we will approach max Q. This again is the point where aerodynamic stress on the vehicle is at its maximum. So the BE-3 engine will throttle back for a little bit as we pierce through the atmosphere. Now that we've passed max Q, BE-3 will begin to throttle back up to 100% power level. We'll see that velocity ticker on the left of your screen start to increase more rapidly as the air gets thinner. New Shepard is moving faster and faster. Absolutely. You can also see that engine plume start to expand as we get into that thinner, high upper atmosphere. Such a cool shot there. So just over two minutes of boost for the BE-3 engine before we reach the next stage of our mission, Miko, main engine cutoff. That will be the next milestone we'll see. New Shepard continues to climb 145,000 feet There it is, main engine cutoff, just over 2,200 miles per hour, and soon vehicle separation. Always love seeing us coast through Miko. Now, when the vehicles separate and the crew capsule from the booster, uh, we're going to be entering that phase of microgravity. And you can see that zero G indicator at the bottom of your screen. This is really where most of our payloads are getting into the core of their science mission. Oh, what a fantastic view. All sorts of cool experiments here enabled in microgravity in free fall. Items don't sink or float. Hot air doesn't rise. Plants and cells respond to this novel stimulus with different patterns of gene expression, which gives us new insights for agricultural technologies and medicine. And we talked earlier about the importance of fluid physics because fluid flow on the ground dominated by gravity, the liquid at the bottom of your cup, but in space it's dominated by surface tension, which leads to all sorts of cool effects with capillary action. Uh, and these effects are relevant for everything from drinking coffee to refueling satellites to the microfluidics in your medical diagnostics. Incredible. And I'm sure the payloads are enjoying all of the clean, very clean microgravity data that they're collecting at this time. Loving that view back down on the clouds over West Texas. Now, if you watch that ticker on the lower left corner, you see we are slowly counting down in our velocity to zero. That's the vertical velocity of the system. And when we reach zero, that's when we've reached Apogee. And fantastic. Capsule pausing in its upward journey just momentarily. Apogee for the capsule at 351,247 feet, well into space and over the Kármán line. Fantastic mission for our payloads on board today. And Erica, so now we've got both vehicles racing back down to Earth under the effect of gravity. The gumdrop shape here of the crew capsule will mean a slower return for the crew capsule, but there on the left, a great view of the propulsion module returning back to the West Texas desert.
So as we come back down and the atmosphere begins to get thicker again, we start to have the ability to use our aerodynamic control surfaces. Uh, what you'll be seeing next is the air brakes deploying. This is a critical step in slowing the vehicle down, increasing the surface area, just like a badminton shuttlecock or you know, something that's uh, helping you to come down through the, through the upper atmosphere. We're going to see that the velocity starts to decrease with those air brakes out. In fact, the drag brakes should cut the velocity in about half. So we'll be looking for that, uh, picking up hopefully with the cameras, the long range cameras, and seeing those drag brakes deploy as the propulsion module cuts through the atmosphere. And those are the forward fins deploying there on the right, a great view looking up from the propulsion module into space and seeing those forward fins deploying. You can see the capsule passing by just there on the right hand screen well above the booster at this altitude. What a great video shot. I love seeing this. Those are our experiments, our customers today, getting their microgravity data in. So that booster coming in at about Mach 3, uh, pulling at about 5 Gs as it re-enters the atmosphere. So we're going to be seeing that, that uh, velocity decrease rapidly at this point. And this is one of my favorite parts of observing a mission from West Texas. Those are the drag brakes. There they are deployed. And we see those aft fins steering the booster over the landing pad. Yeah, if you're in West Texas, you may be hearing a sonic boom uh, coming up here as we break through the sound barrier. BE-3 engine relight, just 2,000 feet to go before the landing pad. Landing gear deploying. Oh, love that shot. I can't tell you how many people have told us they thought that this looks like uh, CGI, but indeed one of these most beautiful sh shots in the West Texas desert. We have booster touchdown. Congratulations, New Shepard propulsion module and the BE-3 engine for providing just the right feathered thrust to come in for the nice hovering land. And again, that's the ninth flight for this booster, really showing the, the operational reusability of this system and how many times we can get back to space. Well, Erica, we've just <laughs> safely landed the booster. Now we're about to watch the crew capsule make its final descent back to the West Texas desert. In parallel, the team will vent the propellants, any remaining propellants from the propulsion module and begin safe recovery operations so that we can prepare it for its next mission. You know, these shots are incredible. We've got the Sierra Diablo Mountains in the background. Um, some yuccas and some choyas and of course a world-class <laughs> propulsion module booster on a landing pad. This is awesome. Yeah, it's a pleasantly toasty marshmallow having come right back from space. I absolutely love being out in the desert and just standing next to a rocket that just that morning flew up to space and back. Absolutely amazing. And the thermal protection system. Oh, there we go. We've got main parachutes, three main parachutes on the crew capsule as it makes its descent back from space to Earth. Those parachutes reefed when they're first uh, let out and then expanding to their full diameter. Now, the parachutes are essential in providing a, a gentle touchdown for the crew capsule, but we also have a retro thrust system on the bottom of the capsule that makes that landing even smoother. So as we're coming down, nice slow velocity, right around 1,600 feet, we're going to be looking for that retro thrust system as we get closer to the desert floor. And Erica, this retro thrust system is effectively high pressure gas um, that is fired off to make a cushion of air, a uh, soft landing for the crew capsule, but it kicks up some dust. Such gorgeous scenery, such a gorgeous crew capsule, and uh, again, those parachutes doing their job, taking us down to just about 15 miles per hour. 
the retro thrust system will take us down to just one or two miles an hour as we get down to the, the base of the desert floor. There it is, touchdown for NS24 and our 33 customers and 38,000 postcards. What a journey. Special thank you to all of our customers flying important science and education on board today, especially to all the students who designed and built experiments. I want to shout out uh, to our friends out, out at MIT, the University of Central Florida, PS185 in Brooklyn, AIAA, ASGSR, our sponsors at NASA. So many cool things going on on board today. On board today, they are on the capsule. Yeah, no, you inspire us every day. Thank you for being our customers. If we could just do a quick recap here, Erica, it looked like a nominal boost for the propulsion module and crew capsule combined. Some hypergravity there for our payloads, and then a clean separation. Over 180 seconds of clean microgravity for our payload customers, and two vehicles appearing to land nominally here back in West Texas. I would call this the best day uh, at work for me. This always, is awesome. Always love launch days, Eddie. Just, uh, it brings a smile to everybody's face. Um, if what you saw here today inspired you, please come help us build a road to space. We have hundreds of positions open across all our facilities and have a particular need for machinists and programmers in Florida and Alabama. Please visit our website for more details. And of course, if you'd like to purchase a seat on New Shepard, you can go to blueorigin.com, click the fly to space button in the upper right hand corner. Following a thorough review of today's mission, we look forward to flying our next crewed flight soon. My name is Erica Wagner. For Salt Flat Eddie and everybody here at Blue Origin, thanks for tuning in to New Shepard's 24th flight. Happy holidays and great autumn for Oster. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on the notification bell. Thanks for watching. Space Google Viser YouTube channel.